welcome to our session today, One World, Colorful One Health Lessons. I'd like to welcome Dr. Debbie Thompson. Uh, please introduce yourself and tell us what One Health Lesson does. How does your work fit with the overarching One Health initiatives that are going on around the world? Well, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak today. I think it's incredible to be able to partner up with Crayola Education and bring this message out there because this message is so important. Nice to meet you all. I'm Dr. Deborah Thompson, known as Dr. Debbie to my students. I'm a veterinarian and before becoming a veterinarian, I was teaching in elementary, middle and high schools, as well as teaching adults. Once I got to veterinary school, that's when I first heard about One Health. But what One Health is, it's the connection between our health, animal health, the environment, and plants. A sick environment can cause sick people, right? Some people say it's common sense, but a lot of people ignore it. So the purpose of One Health Lessons is to inspire every child on the planet to value that connection between our health, the environment, animals, and plants. And what One Health Lessons is doing with the One Health initiatives around the world is it's providing extra um, incentive and education to children. Up until this moment, the focus of One Health education has really been at the college level. And in my opinion, that's way too late. If we want to change society, we have to include the children. And this is the best way to do it. Absolutely. And thank you for bringing to us uh, the other guests. We are so fortunate to have Tyler Chuck with us today. Uh, Tyler, please introduce yourself and tell us how you've been teaching One Health really since uh, 2018. Awesome. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. My name is Tyler Chuck and I am a former classroom teacher that now works at an education nonprofit called Community Resources for Science. We're based in the Bay Area. And it's our job and work to connect local scientists to elementary school classrooms. Um, our goal is to bring those scientists into the classroom to help inspire um, young students, oftentimes in low income schools, to show them a pathway to science that they can achieve and, and do. So I met Dr. Debbie in 2018 and was really inspired by the One Health approach um, and thought that it would be such an important um, thing to bring to students. Um, I love how it promotes and encourages teamwork, getting doctors and veterinarians and environmental scientists to work together. It's so important to model that for students in classrooms to learn how to work together and teach them that scientists have to work together and collaborate all the time. So I think that One Health is such an important concept for our world, uh, for, for our youngsters, and especially right now, um, it's so relevant and pertinent as we are going through this coronavirus pandemic. So Tyler, how does the One Health holistic approach enhance students' understanding of science and how people and animals and the environment all interact? Yeah, I think that it's, the One Health approach is extremely important um, because it encourages students and teaches them how to think, how to ask questions about the world, how to make sense of the different um, things that they see and, and the ways that um, their world connects uh, to one another. And Dr. Debbie, how does Tyler's experience in teaching lessons that merge health and animals and the environment compare with stories that you've heard as you've interacted with teachers and students around the world? Well, fortunately, it's very similar to what um, Mr. Tyler Chuck has said. I've heard feedback from folks in Uganda, folks in Peru, all around the world. Teachers want more and more of this type of material because it's simply how the world works, right? We're all connected and it's been ignored for so long. We've been putting science and STEM and STEAM in silos and that's just simply not how the world functions. We have to start to work together. And the One Health approach is truly the teamwork between people who care for the environment, animals, plants, and people. So it's wonderful. Thank you. 
So how do you decide what topics that you're going to cover in the next One Health Lessons? And why is it so important that you listen to teachers as you make those decisions, uh, which really relates to what we're going to ask our participants to do in just a moment. But talk about how important that input is. Yeah, feedback is so important. It's so important. And I could not have gotten the quality of these lessons up to where they are without the feedback of teachers around the world. Because ultimately the purpose of these lessons is to make sure children around the world understand the concept of One Health. And there are so many different cultures, let alone different languages in the world. And even in the United States, there are so many subcultures here. So it's very important for me to understand how do the lessons land in the classroom? What's actually been received by the students and the teachers? And so that feedback from teachers is incredibly useful. The other thing is I, I custom make the lessons to meet the needs of the community. So for instance, in California, there's a bacteria that's found in stagnant water, slow moving streams that wildlife go to. It's called leptospirosis. We can call it lepto for short. I've created actually one of the very first One Health lessons that I created was focused on lepto because I wanna make sure that the children stay as safe as possible and that they avoid any contaminated water. So the same thing goes with other areas of the world. I custom make these lessons to make sure that people stay healthy as well as the environment and animals. Speaking of customization, I was so impressed by your diligent, intentional efforts to have these translated into so many languages. Um, so what is the process of what are your translation goals so that students who are not fluent in English have access to this content regardless of where they live? Right, and it's something that a lot of people don't realize. In the United States alone, there are students who speak about 30 different languages. I think that's the statistic right now. So we have to think outside of English, right, in order to really reach our goals. And I made OneHealthLessons.com not for the English speaking world, but I made it for the world. And I want people to have equal access, equal opportunity to high quality education. And so, as mentioned before, I want to make sure that the lessons land well. The only way it lands well is to make sure that it's spoken in the native tongue, in the native language, the local language that children understand and they speak at home. And ultimately these children can go home and talk to their parents and teach them about the exciting One Health lesson that they learned that day. And that way we can influence families and we can teach communities. Great. So speaking of languages, at Crayola, we often talk about art being a universal language so um, that we can read art and gain insights. So we have a tool um, that we've developed called Seek, which enables us to seek insights from art. And, and again, that's where uh, children and their families can speak in their native tongue about the art when we teach how to look deeply. Now, you can use Seek uh, to read a, the art in a student's artifact, fine art, book illustrations, or scientific sketches, really any image. And so you can see here by looking at Seek that it's built on the four pillars of learning, observing, citing evidence, inferring, and inquiring, which are also important in One Health Lessons. So we, um, we are gonna offer to everyone who is viewing this session, you can sign up to receive two free project plans uh, and these use SEEK as a way to learn about art. Uh, these lessons are right now and collecting today's stories, both super relevant uh, topics for today. And they can be implemented either in a classroom in-person group or the way many schools are teaching now with the pandemic through remote instruction. So you'll receive these uh, projects as PDFs in English, Spanish, and French, and uh, be able to use SEEK with your students. 
So we also have a seek uh, thank you gift that we'd like to share with the participants who have joined us today. And um, what you do to get your seek frame, this is a, a frame where you can pop out the middle, put in an image, and then it has the questions on the side uh, to remind you of what, what the way to read art. And you can receive that thank you gift by sketching and sharing an image. So I urge you grab some scrap paper and art tools. You could do that right now and sketch along with us, or you could just receive the instructions now and, and post your sketch later. But what we'd like you to do, sketch an idea that you would like your students to explore from this holistic One Health lens. So be thinking about that integration of health, animals, plants, the overall environment, and what would you like as a future One Health or Crayola lesson? Now, everyone, this isn't like a chance to win. This is everyone who sketches and posts and uploads your sketch to this uh, Facebook thread will receive this frame. And it includes the questions that help the students read art. First, you start with that observation, the SC. What do you see? Then cite your evidence, explain the artist's decisions, and then my favorite is no. What do you know by looking at the art? And what else do you want to know? We are really excited that we have a fourth grade teacher here today with us to share the experience that he had with One, Less, One Health Lessons and his students. I'd like to introduce Greg Takahachi, and have you explain how you've been involved with One Health Lessons. What advice can you give to teachers who are interested in inviting a One Health Lesson leader to teach your students remotely? Or perhaps you can inspire an educator or scientist to volunteer to be a One Health Lesson leader. Yes, thank you for inviting me. Um, I found One Health Lessons to be very engaging for my students and very stimulating. Uh, second language learners also benefit from this greatly as they go home and explain it to their non-English speaking parents. I found this very, very entertaining for my students as well. And what's really funny is, is that I was a third grade teacher last year and I was fortunate enough to roll up with my students this year. And when I told Dr. Thompson about or Dr. Debbie rather, about um, me being on uh, uh, with her again, she, uh, my students remembered so many things about the One Health lesson. And I asked, what, what did you remember? And they said they remembered the visuals about the pictures of the animals that were all there at the beginning. And then the next scene, they disappeared. And uh, Mr. Chuck asked, what do you notice? And the students were able to say exactly what was missing. And it just blew me away that they remember things from, from last year. That was eight months ago. I couldn't even remember those things. It benefits them greatly. And it's, it's health, isn't it? It's important to us. Thank you. And as we, we come to a, a close here, I'd like to remind the participants about the resources that are available to you. And what's really exciting is when you sign up to get the project plans, these handouts, you are also going to be able to stay connected with One Health and receive all the new updates that they're posting on their website. So um, Dr. Debbie, I'd love for you to share with our viewers what are your three top reasons why educators will want to stay connected with your organization? Well, One Health Lessons will be staying up to date. Right now, you'll see seven different age-appropriate COVID-19 lessons that are on the website. And those COVID-19 lessons were built to alleviate anxiety over this pandemic. What the COVID-19 lessons teach is, number one, where the virus likely came from, two, how can we protect ourselves today, and three, what scientists of various backgrounds are doing, they're working together to make sure that you and your family are staying safe in the future. It also um, 
highlights teamwork in such a way that regardless of what your interest is and what your strength is, you realize that you can work with other people of various strengths in order to deal with complicated problems and solve those problems. So teamwork is incredibly uh, important and it's an underlying theme to all of the One Health lessons. Right. Empathy is another thing that's also taught during these lessons because ultimately you can't have One Health if you don't care about others. Last thing with OneHealthLessons.com, we have fortunately built up such a global network. We have lessons being translated into over 75 languages today. And there are starting to have um, connections between various classrooms around the world. Things like pen pals are being developed <laughs> and programs that are focused on that. What a great opportunity. And so just in closing, I would like to remind all of you to sketch the topic that you would like a future One Health lesson to cover, put a name, a title on your sketch, post that image that you draw, and when you do, we will mail you the seek frame. But even if you um, don't post, you can still click through to the link and receive the project plans. Um, just use the QR code that we have here, go to the landing page, and that will keep us connected. So thank you so much for joining us today and for all that you do for your students.